Our new song is available for pre-order at getcominghome.com. Check it out. Download iTunes to pre-order and support our work. Here's the story from the New York Post. Lead Secret Service agent at Trump's Butler rally knew of credible intelligence of threat but didn't raise alarm. Senate report finds. And this is just one story in a plethora of stories where we keep learning that the Secret Service either did not do their job for some ridiculous reasons, like why weren't they doing drone detection? Well, someone forgot to bring a cable, and so they were calling tech support, but tech support wouldn't answer. So they just said, you know what? <laughs> we don't need to stop the guy who's flying a drone or doing whatever it is he's doing. Then we got this other crazy report. Take a look at this one. Secret Service was informed of crooks 27 minutes before shots were fired, never told Trump to get off the stage. Quote, shortly before shots were fired, Secret Service counter sniper saw local law enforcement running towards the AGR building with their guns drawn, but he did not alert former President Trump's protective detail to remove him from the stage. I'm sorry. I'm going to go there. A lot of people are too scared to go here. You get these prominent conservatives and they're going to be like, well, I don't want to say that. I'm not going that far. The reporting the other day was that from Time magazine, Iran and, and the New York Times. Here you go. New York Times. U.S. detected potential Iranian plot to kill Trump separate from Saturday's shooting. This is July 16th. The reporting has later come out. Now, Time is saying that the day before the shooting, they arrested this guy for organizing a hit on Donald Trump, instructed Secret Service to increase their security. The very next day, Secret Service in every facet stands down at key moments. You're not going to convince me this was an accident. I have long said the sim- I prefer Occam's razor, no conspiracy theories. The simple solution tends to, I'm sorry, let's, let's be very correct. In the absence of evidence, the solution that makes the least amount of assumptions tends to be correct, which would be, in my opinion, not that the, the feds instructed the Secret Service, hey, there's an assassination plot against Donald Trump. We just arrested the guy who organized it. Be on the lookout and increase your security. And then they went K and then didn't do it accidentally. How do you not do it? Negligence, every single agent just doesn't do it. Then you have a guy flying a drone around. Well, you know, our drone detection wasn't working. OK, you didn't see every every it, it's remarkable. It was a, it was it was a it was an act of uh, demonic possession or satanic intervention where every Secret Service agent was stricken, blind, deaf and dumb all at the same moment. And they couldn't see the drone flying over Trump's rally. But there's Tim, a text, their system wasn't set up. They couldn't use their eyes. There's a text message from Secret Service saying, hey, someone just followed our lead in. They saw him sneaking around. You, I'm, I'm sorry. You make way too many assumptions in Secret Service was told there's an assassination plot the day before. They arrested the guy. And then the next day they're like, let's not do anything we're supposed to do to keep Trump safe. Sounds like, in my opinion, the simple solution is a high ranking official who was coordinating needed only restrict the full scope of security, meaning why were there no Secret Service agents on the roof? Because this, the, the, the run of the mill agents whose job is not logistics and coordination just said, hey, boss, where do you want me? And he says, I'm going to need you guys positioned up over here and we'll, we'll, we'll communicate by radio. And they go, you got it. All of the rank and file dudes just assumed everything was taken care of. But now we're seeing the lead Secret Service agent at Trump's Butler rally knew of the threat and didn't raise the alarm. It's exactly what I said, exactly what I predicted. Here's the best part. When they were getting the Secret Service agents to testify, they all said they, they all basically refused or could not say who was in charge. Now, that was the crazed element of the story. They were all just like, we don't know who's in charge. Not a single one of them could come out and explain who gave them the orders and how this went down. I'm sorry. The simple solution here is in some degree official capacity. It makes sense. And it's terrifying. Look, there's that survey that shows 20 percent of Democrats believe, I think it was you, Gov, did the survey, Trump, that the country would be better off if Trump was was killed. It's horrifying. So it takes one Secret Service agent to just be like, stand down. They knew the plot was happening. I'm sorry, I, I can't make any other conclusions. But you know what? I'm, I'm crazy. I'm wrong. None of it's true. Stop listening to me. I think it's telling that Senator Chris Blumenthal, who's a Democrat from Connecticut, has been saying for weeks now the public is going to be shocked by this. And he's been saying all of these federal agencies are stonewalling this investigation. Uh, in his comment today, he said a man died, a former president was almost killed, and it was completely preventable from the outset. I mean, it is bizarre to me that there is so many like examples in this report uh, where it's just so it, it feels like if it was this preventable, why do we fund this agency? Because they're clearly very bad. There's a, there's one of the examples that that some of the reporting has given is uh, that the 
Secret Service knew from the beginning that the local snipers were planning on setting up inside the building rather than on top. They, they didn't station their own per person there. They didn't ask them to to be on top of it. I think that was one of the big questions from the outset. Like, there is a rooftop near a, uh, near a presidential candidate, near President Trump. Why was it left available for occupancy? And uh, the answer is the Secret Service let it be available. And then in the days after, you get Kim Cheadle, the, the former director, she's obviously resigned over this, uh, who said... You know, the buck stops with us, the Secret Service, but also local local law enforcement was uh, in charge of that building. I mean, they really set local law enforcement up to take the fall for this. And that, again, speaks to this overwhelming culture of wanting to avoid responsibility that we are now getting bipartisan uh, confirmation of. It's not like Republicans are out there wagging their fingers. It's it's Democrats who are joining in and saying the Secret Service messed up in an in inexcusable way. Yeah. And I think this problem is, you know, systemic, right? Because I think people, you know, forget uh, that the Secret Service has had many scandals and many different administrations as well. There was the prostitution scandal abroad that rocked the agency during the Obama years, and now we're having this. And um, But Tim, to give you a little bit of solace here, I think conspiracy theorists, we're conspiracy theorists today, but with the truth tellers tomorrow. And I think that's exactly what's happening here. You, it, it doesn't make any sense to try to explain away what just absolutely seems like common sense. Why would you not secure the rooftop? Why would you not make sure it was there were agents there who had a... You you know, clear view of the president, able to take him out. And also, too, if he knew that the, the assassin or the would-be assassin uh, was there, why did he not make the call to go neutralize him immediately? They arrested this guy the day before, an Ira a Pakistani with Iranian ties, for organizing a hit on Donald Trump, told the Secret Service of the plot. Matt Gates revealed, I think it was, uh, who was it? Was it Posobiec? That uh, there's five, or it was, Benny, was it Benny Johnson? There's five assassination teams in the United States Targeting Donald Trump. Matt Gates, yeah. Matt Gates was talking about this. And now we've got, the, uh, we've of course got that confirmation. Donald Trump has come out and said he was briefed by the director of national intelligence that he is being targeted for this. So you go back to July. They knew this was happening. And then the Secret Service doesn't put their agents on the rooftop. The lo local law enforcement said four days prior, they, they told them to get guys up there. They didn't do it. Yeah. The, they watched the cops run with their guns drawn and they do nothing. Well, you that is a stand down. When they uh, arrested that Pakistani dude, who was they that arrested the Pakistani dude? Pretty sure it was the FBI. Mm -hmm. And then they told the Secret Service, and Secret Service is, yep. serves under the Department of Homeland Security. Yes. Uh, is, it, is Secret Service uh, uh, Homeland? Under Homeland Security. DHS, yeah. And uh, FBI is not under Homeland Security? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. They are under Homeland Security? Pretty sure they all are, yeah. They're under DOJ. They're under the Department of Justice. But isn't, yeah. isn't that the same? They, FBI does not work with Homeland Security? No, I don't know. They're, they're under the different jurisdiction. So they're under oh, okay. the DOJ. Yeah. Homeland Security is like a newer organization that was formed right after 9 11. They were like, yeah. uh oh, we need a new type of defense. And I'm like, do well, we? It was, it we was, already have the it FBI. Was coordination. All these different federal agencies were operating independently and they needed, they wanted coordination between them. And the current head of the Department of Homeland Security, Secretary, Secretary Alejandro Mayorkas, was impeached by the House for being derelict in duty because of the southern the crisis at the southern border. I mean, there have been concerns about how uh, the Department of Homeland Security is being managed for all of the Biden administration. I don't know why it would be surprising that yet another component of this would be uh, vulnerable, whether that's because they are not good at their jobs or because they're intentionally leaving gaps in Trump's security. Uh, I know we don't want to make accusations, but it just seems like at a certain point, uh, if it wasn't intentional, it's so careless that it's like this this should be a completely defunded department. And this after 9-11, man, the way that the military, like they locked down and created all this, like, well, first of all, if there's ter terror cells trying to kill Donald Trump, that's a, that's a, those are domestic terrorist organizations and so they need to be targeted as such. Secondly, I'm just always like, what is the point of Homeland Security? Why did they make it? What is it for? It's just, that's what FBI is, is providing Homeland Security. That's the FBI's job. Well, let me, uh, let me help you out, good sir, Ian, with some enlightening information. The DHS consists of the Customs Service, Immigration, you've got uh, Federal Protective Services, like Federal Police, you've got Transit Security, Law Enforcement Training Center, Animal and uh, Plant Health Inspection Service, Strategic National Stockpile, National Disaster Medical System, Nuclear Incident Response Teams, Domestic Emergency Support Teams, the Center for Domestic Preparedness, CBRN Countermeasures, the Department of Energy thing. And so you, you, you get the general idea. They had a bunch of different... Uh, U.S. Coast Guard was under the Department of Transportation. That, I, I don't know, like, 
We can certainly make the argument about the expansion of executive authority going too far. Mm. But the Coast Guard operating under the Department of Transportation seems kind of weird to me. I think maybe Department of Homeland Security kind of makes sense in bringing in security apparatus into you know, into one area. It's just they call it Homeland Security, but they'll call things different names than what they're actually doing. I don't know why they made that organization. Like, why did they centralize authority like they did? Well, the Department of Defense is actually the Department of Offense. And everybody it, knows it. It has become that. It absolutely become, has become that. Became that a long time. And they might they might as well just come out and rename it the Department of Defense. I mean, I'd, whatever yeah. at this point. I I I actually respect that. <laughs> yeah. It's like, well, you know, look, well, we have to declare the Department of War. of War, right? And then they of course <laughs> changed the name. I think we should rebrand back to the Department of War. I think that's yeah. the best one. Let's just it's be just, honest with our branding, yeah, right? Yeah, let's just call it that. Yeah. That's what the founding fathers called it, yeah, Department yeah. of War. Yeah. So I I have to wonder with the. You know, we had, we had what they uh, these Secret Service agents all started uh, uh, retiring so they could get their pensions because if these investigations go too far, they could lose their pensions or their retirement or whatever. So I'm wondering if we're going to get any kind of real explanation, because right now what I'm seeing with the Senate report, nobody wants to say what no, nobody wants to bring up the elephant in the room, and that is. It appears that the Secret Service agents, and I believe this is the most reasonable conclusion, but may not be may not be correct, were hoping that Trump's life would be lost. Which is crazy because he's still dependent on the Secret Service for protection, right? The fact that this is even a question and that's who is still in charge of security, at least for me, seems like, you know, should, shouldn't we bring in a third party here? Do we have like the SEAL team that's available to secure him Trump, for a little Trump while? Trump doesn't want private security. I know, which is like, I mean, on the one hand... I understand that there is a level of like if he is going to be the president and the Secret Service remains in place, you don't want to create a relationship with them where you are antagonizing them. I mean, even after the first assassination attempt, he his whole family came out and said there are really great agents. They made a, they made what I felt like was a pretty clear distinction between the overarching bureaucracy of the Secret Service and the agents who have been assigned to their specific details. Mm-hmm. And even in the report, there's some uh, th- there's a part where they say that Trump's detail had requested basically a certain amount of reinforcements and extra support and they had been denied that by you know corporate at the top secret service and so you know i i think he is trump is in a very difficult position where he is both dependent on the agents and also has an understanding from the inside that that it's it's like a lot of uh parts of the federal bureaucracy some things some agents are working honestly and some are not thanks for watching this clip from timcast irl make sure to check out the live show monday through friday at 8 p.m on this channel subscribe and we'll see you all there